Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Welcome back to the ongoing series, Fashion School, where we explore the best resources to learn as much as is humanly possible about fashion. The number one question that gets asked when people are looking for fashion resources is, what documentary should I watch? And we have covered before on this channel that the answer to that question is, all of them. There are not that many, just literally watch all of them and then start them all over and watch them again. The second most requested fashion resource is what fashion books should I read? The answer to that requires a little bit more nuance because reading a book obviously takes much longer than watching a movie and there are many fashion books. This is the second video in this series about fashion books. You can find the link to the first one down in the description. I recommend you watch this one first because this has much more they're not like better books, they're just uh, much more unusual books about fashion. Okay, bet, let's get started. Fashion books, fashion books, fashion books. Fashion, a fashion history of the 20th century from the Kyoto Institute. This book is stellar. It's not just a pretty picture book, but man, it could be a pretty picture book just all on its own. There could be no words inside this thing and it would still be worth getting. The Kyoto Costume Institute has an enormous collection of gorgeous clothes that creates a, a very cohesive and complete narrative. And they're kind of showing you one version of that arc of fashion history that we can see over that course of a hundred years. I'm obsessed with fashion. I literally can't think about anything other than clothes, but I often have difficulty contextualizing clothes that are older than maybe 20 years. Anything before 2000 and I start getting very hazy on what other things were going on around it. And this book does an exceptional job of helping you to kind of mentally contextualize what else was happening in fashion when this designer started or this other designer started. It also directed my gaze in a lot of ways that were pretty surprising. Like this is a Pierre Cardin piece from the 1960s. I did not realize that looks like this were coming out for men in the 60s. So this is not just a book covering the most famous pieces that you may have already seen in like a fashion history class. Their goal is to try to, or I don't know if it was their goal, but at least for me, the effect was that I ended up learning about a lot of things that I was really surprised went back that far. There's of course also a lot of things in here that I just am a sucker for anyway. I mean, we have our boy Martin Margiela over here. And if you dig all the way to the back, you can see some of the early century stuff from Cal Sir Gabrielle Chanel in the House of Worth. A lot of which is shockingly wearable. Like, I'm very surprised looking at some of these. But in fashion, there's never a shortage of just pretty picture books. The thing that really sets this one apart and makes it something that I would say is worth your money in a very serious way is the commentary that they give, especially for the contemporary stuff. This is all brilliantly written stuff. It really helps to, in just a couple of sentences, contextualize what you're looking at. For example, this is uh, pieces from the Lumps and Bumps Comme de Garçon collection. Not what has been seen before, not what has been repeated. Instead, new discoveries that look towards the future that are liberated and lively, end quote. This was the message written by Comme de Garçon in the spring of 1997. Shown here are outfits with down pads sewn inside, creating irregular mounds on the surface of the clothes. The shape of the body is deformed by the clothes, and this shook up the standardized concept people have of their bodies. 20th century fashion discovered the body, however, the clothes seemed to conform to the shape of the body. Kawakubo tried to free the clothes from their enslavement to the body and discovered this new shape. And they give one of those for basically every single contemporary piece. And I think it's for the old, yeah, it's for most of the old stuff too. These, these summaries are really what make this thing so crucial. I, I strongly recommend this book. Hey, so a big part for me of learning about fashion has involved getting fashion picture books, but it also heavily involves just reading regular fashion books, like ones that are just words. I would not know nearly as much as I know about fashion, if not for the fact that I just read a lot of books, which works out really well because the channel is sponsored by Audible, which is a service I've used for years and use every single day. I'm super busy and I'm a really slow reader, so Audible ends up working out really great for when I'm driving or when I'm doing housework or when I'm just kind of mindlessly scrolling on my phone. There is an incredible selection of fashion books that are on Audible, and in the last year I've read between like 12 and 15 of them. If you want to support the channel and if you want to get very high quality fashion information, you can sign 
up using the link that I have for the channel, which is audibletrial.com slash blissfoster. One of the books that we cover in this episode is actually on Audible, and it is one of the best ones that they have. I also recommend that you get Gods and Kings by Dana Thomas, especially if you're really into Alexander McQueen. That book is phenomenal. I'm going to post a list down in the description of all the books that I really love on Audible that have to do with fashion. This kind of fashion information is so much more valuable than just scrolling around on Instagram or Twitter. Like if, if you're very invested in trying to build up your understanding of fashion as a whole, this, this is the way to do it. The trial is free. They give you a free audiobook, And if you want to support the channel, this is a really good concrete way to do that. Let's please make them happy that they sponsored me, folks. AudibleTrial.com slash BlissFoster. You need to use that link specifically. It really is great. This is the best subscription service that I use. The second book is actually a series, and we have talked about it on the channel before, but oh man, I cannot recommend Pattern Magic enough. This is technically a book of pattern instructions, and I don't even sew, but this book has been so enriching to flip through. I mean, this stuff in here is absolutely great. What is this? It says, go join the motherfucking Patreon. Why would it say that? All the books in this series are really cheap, especially considering they're fashion books. But I mean, basically, like, if, you, if you're really into fashion, this is fascinating to flip through. It's a cool thing to have on your shelf. If you sew, you basically have to get this. The author takes seemingly very complex pattern tricks and then breaks them down in a way that's very understandable and then kind of gives you an outline of what the patterns laid flat actually look like in order to achieve these effects. The level of detail here is absolutely insane and I can speak for some of my friends who do so that picked up this book and didn't know how to do this stuff beforehand. She makes it very approachable and easy to do something that on the, the actual mannequin at the end of it looks very, very complex. There's a total of three of them and they've been translated into a lot of different languages so you have options there if English is not your primary language. I think English actually is one of the options because I think this was originally written in Japanese. Yes, indeed. It was originally in Japanese. It's by Tomoko Nakamichi. She spends her life teaching the pattern makers of the world how to make cooler stuff. I only have the first book. I wish I had all three. I probably will end up with all three eventually. I can't recommend them enough. Just go ahead and buy all three at once. So the first two were kind of uh, fashion picture books almost. Uh, the last one has no pictures in it at all, but I mean, doesn't need it at all. This is by Shahida Bari. It's uh, Dressed a Philosophy of Clothes. As many people know, I'm very obsessed with this concept of fashion creating symbolism and meaning in the world. And this is something that I've, I've never seen someone delve into that concept with more thoroughness and acute awareness of the way that it might actually function in real life than Professor Bari. But this book dives into the, the way that symbolism might come about in the real world as a result of clothes. So not so much like the symbolism of clothes throughout history. She's not going into specific collections very often. Sometimes she does, but for the most part, it's kind of what what is the baseline of symbolism that clothes create for us in our own lives? Kind of a flip on the concept of like, what do we talk about when we talk about clothes? But it's really enriched and the reason it's making this list is because one, she's an outstanding writer. I mean, I'm not sure I've read very many nonfiction books that are this poetically written. You could tell that she was having an enormous amount of fun writing this. And the book is further bolstered up by the fact that Professor Bari just has a very clear understanding of the way that cultural ideas evolve and are shaped. It's pretty obvious that she's extremely well versed in theory. I mean, if you end up looking up those videos, you'll find that out like on the second one that you watch where she's giving a lecture on Freud. And I've always said that the biggest benefit of reading theory and taking the time to soak in some of the most difficult pieces of writing that have ever been made, the whole reason someone would take the time to read those things is because it enriches your thought process in everything else in your life. Reading theory really forces you to kind of back up 20,000 feet, not take things at face value and really ask yourself, what are the systems that are in place that are affecting things like our preconceived notions of what a code is. But the wonderful thing about that is that reading this book is not like reading a piece of theory. I mean, I, I'm an extremely slow reader anyway, but I mean, when I'm reading heavy, like Michel Foucault kind of stuff, it really will take me like 12 to 15 minutes per page to move through that stuff. I, I really have to soak it in and take a lot of time and go back and reread and reconnect things and underline stuff and make notes. It's very hard to read most 
pieces of writing that are in the category of theory. Professor Bari is not like that at all. She, she makes this very approachable, very understandable. She'll introduce you to a lot of new concepts, but this is by no means a difficult book to read. And for that, I was so thankful because that is such a difficult thing to find. If you want to expand your understanding of what clothes mean to all of us in our day-to-day -day lives in almost kind of like a... <laughs> Professor Bari, if you're watching this, I mean this in the most positive way possible. It kind of expands that concept for you, kind of the way an acid trip might, where she's making connections and introducing you to ideas that once you hear them from her, you feel like you've kind of always known that somewhere in your head, but you've never been able to articulate it, or maybe you haven't understood it well enough to be able to say it yourself. And the book is very literally divided up as simply as possible. Like this chapter is called Suits, Coats, and Jackets. This chapter is called Shoes. The first chapter is called Dresses. And I actually, I actually want to read you a little excerpt from the very end of the Dresses chapter, because I think it kind of summarizes what makes her writing so valuable. So we'll just take a few sentences here. How women dress their bodies is the product of possibility. Women's clothes can be elusive and evocative, serious, parodic, and playful. Dresses solicit the gaze and subject us, but they are the surface, too, for the soul of a woman. In these surfaces, women reflect on what they understand of themselves and how they wish to be understood by others. Perhaps there is no garment equal to who we are, no fold, no cut, no gaze, no look that could have the measure of this. But the challenge of dress is only to seek out the truths of the body, its variegated surfaces and sensations, the brute fact of biology, and the infinitely different ways we experience it. This body which we cannot escape and which we clothe to meet the world.